بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the fiqh class Today inshallah we will discuss the book of sacrifices We discussed earlier the book of Abahi which pertains to the day of Eid the Udhiyah and this is what we will discuss here, the hukum of the sacrifice. And the person on whom this command is addressed, then we will discuss the kind of sacrifices, the characteristics, the ages, and the number. What is sufficient for how many people and then we will discuss the ahkam of the slaughter, slaughtering these sacrifices. And after that, the meat. What do we do with the meat? Now you sacrificed, what do you do with the meat? So this is basically the discussion of this book. The ruling on sacrifice, who is addressed with that ruling? What are the types of sacrifice, the conditions, what do we do with the meat? The hukum of sacrifice. Now, on the day of Eid, what's the ruling on the sacrifice? Is it haram? Is it wajib, obligatory? Is it recommended? Is it fard kifaya? What is it? What is the hukum of the sacrifice. Hmm? Babur says, Sunnah Mu'akkada. Established Sunnah. Do you agree? Is it Sunnah Mu'akkada? Well, what's the difference between Sunnah and Sunnah Mu'akkada? Emphasized. It is not emphasized. It was done. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Now everyone is saying something different. What did the Prophet ﷺ say or what did he do? Didn't he sacrifice every Eid? Was it every Eid? Yes, it was. Isn't that an evidence that it is obligatory? How Sunnah Muakkadah? What does he have to do to make it obligatory? He has to say it. He has to command it. He has to command it. To command it. Okay. The Prophet ﷺ, what? In the Hanafi, they can be obligatory. In the Hanafi, why? Because the Sunnah Muqadda to Abraham Abu Hanifa is considered to be obligatory. No. Yeah, if you must do it every time, it becomes... If you must do it every time, then it is not Sunnah Makkad anymore. It is wajib. Yeah, but he considers it to be. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever had liberty, had ability, and he did not slaughter, let him not approach our prayer area, our musalla. What does that hadith tell you? He is telling the one who was able to sacrifice and not to do so, not to come to the musalla. According to the majority of scholars, they said it is sunnah. And some of them said it is emphasized sunnah. But in general, the majority of scholars said it is sunnah. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, it is wajib. If you are able to sacrifice and you did not, you are blameworthy. <coughs> Those who can do it and did not, they are blameworthy. Now, based on the action of the Prophet wasallam, especially when it was emphasized by his saying that you should not come to the musalla, if you were able and you didn't, based on that, it should be obligatory. 
But the majority of scholars say, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا دَخَلَتِ الْعَشْرِ وَأَرَادَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِنْ ضَحِي When the ten days of the Hijjah commence, when they start, and one of you wanted, they say here, there is a key that it is Sunnah, it is not Wajib, because the Prophet ﷺ said, and one of you wanted to slaughter. If you have to, it doesn't make sense to say, and wanted to slaughter. This is in Sahih Muslim. إذا دخلت العشر وأراد أحدكم أن يضحي فلا يأخذ من شعره وظفره شيئا. He should not take anything. He should not cut his hair, clip his nails. This is at the beginning of the ten days of the Hijjah. So they say based on that hadith, it should be Sunnah. So the issue is between the majority of scholars and Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. What kind of sacrifice can we offer? What kind of sacrifice can we offer? Camel. Sheep. Cow. Sheep slash goat. Camel slash Nothing? Llama? No. Horse? No horse. Chicken? No, chicken, yes. No, 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 no. Chicken. It has to be sheep and a horse. We're talking about for off for, 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 you know, Sacrifice. We're talking about the sacrifice. Yeah. That's what we mean. The day of Eid, the sacrifice. Abahi. What can you sheep sacrifice? Yeah. Family of sheep, camel, or cow. Sheep, camel, or cow? Sheep could be, you know, uh, goat or sheep, goat, camel, or cow. That's it. Okay, so we cannot slaughter a llama? No. Anything under the category of an'am. Anything under the category of the an'am. What is the category of the an'am? <laughs> sheep, camel, or cow. A llama can be considered Hmm. First, we will identify the categories. Are they only what you mentioned or more? What are their characteristics? If we said it is a cow, if we say it is a cow, what kind of cow? How old? How many is sufficient? And for how many families? So first, what is to sacrifice? They agreed that it is the animals that are included in Cattle, an'am, sheep, camel, cow. That is what you can sacrifice. Other than that, you cannot. Of course, there are some opinions, like if you, if you wanted to sacrifice <coughs> chicken. However, the main issue here is what has greater value or virtue. What is more rewarded for sacrifice? What is the highest? Hmm? Camel. Camel? Camel or cow? Camel or cow? Camel, camel. Camel, is, camel is the highest. Camel? camel? Yes. You disagree? Camel and cow aren't they the same level? No. Oh, camel is huge. Cow is big too, man. <laughs> What, uh, what if I say the sheep is, has the greater value? Sheep price is pretty good too. Hmm? Yeah, sheep is pretty good too. It is, everything is pretty good. Even the camel is good. No, it's high. It's pretty good meaning tasting good. No, I would think it's, would think it's high because of, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was commanded to sacrifice his son, what was the, the alternative that was sent? A ram. Yeah, a ram. It was a ram. What do you think? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send something lesser value to sacrifice? <coughs> what do you think the Prophet sallallahu would sacrifice something of a lesser value? He did camels? Yeah, yeah. That was when? 
when he went to Hajj, but every Eid, what did he sacrifice? Sheep. So isn't the sheep the best? So you changed your opinion now? So is it always, does it always about the money that you spend or? Usually. Usually? It doesn't matter the amount you spend. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's not the blood that reaches Allah. It is what? The piety. MashaAllah. So you solve the problem with him. He disagrees with you. He's sitting next to you. <laughs> the majority of scholars said the camel is the best. Now, why? Again, the Sunnah seems to be against this because the Prophet ﷺ always sacrificed sheep on the day of Eid. But actually, when he went for Hajj, on the day of Eid, he sacrificed camels, 100, 100 camels. So to say always sheep, that is not accurate. Now, but it is true that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim ﷺ to sacrifice his son, he sent down ram instead of camel. That is the opinion of Imam Malik, that the sheep has greater value. It is more virtuous. But the majority of scholars said no. Why? Based on the hadith of Friday. On Friday, whoever comes in the first hour, as if he sacrificed what? Camel. Second hour, as if he sacrificed what? Cow. Third hour, as if he sacrificed sheep. So there is difference. Now, if you say they are the same, or you say the sheep is better, then that means you should come later to the Jum'ah, instead of coming earlier. So there is an analogy here. Why? You say, you say no? I disagree with the analogy. Why you disagree? It's two different situations. Two different situations. It's talking about the reward. Yes. Still disagree? Why? Just for the sake of disagreement or? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. That's about the reward. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about here. Not about what you can or cannot sacrifice. What has more virtue in sacrificing? That's the point in the hadith. Okay, so this is the issue. Which is better? What, what has greater value, what has greater reward. Now, what are the conditions of the sacrificial animals? Now we agreed it is camel, cow, and sheep. What kind of sheep can you sacrifice? The best. The best. At least? At least? Uh, should it have, should it have any visible defects. Visible defects. That's very subjective. Non visible defects. Non -visible defects. Mad cow disease. Yeah, exactly. I can know that there is, it's not right. That it's what do you mean by it's not right? I need I mean, something you know specific. That, you have to know that, uh, he's, he, that he's not healthy, then he can't. Right? If you know it. It's 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 healthy. Healthy. It should not be mutilated, like the ears should be mm -hmm. and should be pure. Mm -hmm. the, be broken. the teeth shouldn't be broken? Are you going to eat the teeth? How it is abused? It shouldn't, have been hurt. it shouldn't be a work animal. It shouldn't be a work animal. So it should be raised in a, in a nice apartment, in a nice house. In <laughs> yeah. in a, really, it should be fast. What's the evidence for this? Qulhatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqeen. Proof, please. Sacrifice the animal that what? That worked for you. Worked for you? <coughs> Actually, uh, when, uh, when the sacrifice animal is being taken to Hajj, you are allowed to even ride it. So that doesn't seem to sound right. See? He disagrees with you. You are allowed to ride the sacrifice. Because that was the notion for the Arab before Islam that this is sacrifice, this is hadith for the house of Allah, so it should not be touched. 
So the question is not what you can actually, because you can sacrifice a lot. What you cannot, that is what is limited. What you should avoid. The Prophet وسلم, specified four char- characteristics. <laughs> the limping. What kind of limping animal that you could see, you could tell that this sheep is limping. Not slight limping, slow than, slower than other sheep. That does not affect, but the limping that is visible, that is obvious. <laughs> and the crossed eye, sheep. This is the second one, the crossed eye. The third one, the animal that is sick, that is, that sickness is obvious. And the last one the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, means the very weak one, that there is no marrow in the bone of that animal. Now obviously you cannot see if there is marrow or not in the bone unless you kill, but from your vision, just your, your observation, you notice that this animal is very, very weak. This one you cannot sacrifice. When it comes to animals, it is very easy. Why? Usually animals, they are almost in the same level, same weight, almost. Unlike humans. If animals are in the same age, mostly they, are, they have the same weight. Why? Animals, unlike humans, humans eat whether they are hungry or they are not. Animals usually they don't eat unless they are hungry. Okay, so they are almost the same. But when you notice that you have all the sheep on same level and one of them is different, 10 pounds less or 15 pounds less, then there is something here. This one you cannot sacrifice. Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ specified now those four things. What are they? Limping. The crossed eye animal, the animal that doesn't, doesn't see with both eyes, one eye. The very sick animal that you could tell it is sick and the very weak. These are the four conditions that you have to avoid. What about other than that? What about other than that? Age. Hmm? No, we're talking now about these conditions. We did not come to the age yet. We're talking about these conditions. What if it was another type? Other than those four things. Like blind animal. Analogy. Hmm? You can do an analogy on all Can you do analogy? What is the sickness? In the, in the eyes. Okay, what about the horns? If one of them is broken. That's like a weakness. Is that a weakness? Mm, not necessarily. Could have fought with someone. <laughs> if it's a ram, it's a weakness, right? I don't know. You tell me. What about the tooth, as you said? I remember hearing that. But the if, the, if, there are, if there are two broken. teeth that are broken. What? Okay, what, what do we do now? Someone came to you and asked you, you studied, so tell me what can I sacrifice? I went to the market and there are hundreds of sheep. I need to know which one to avoid and which one I can use. Give them these four. Hmm? Give them these four. These four. He said, well, I saw this one. It is not uh, one of these four that you mentioned. Okay. Like castrated animal. Yeah, what about that? Yeah. Is that weakness? Actually, that's strength. It is strength. Why? Because when you, when, when, when you have this thing, everything that you eat will be kept. You don't discharge anything. So actually, the meat even will be more tender. Obviously. The castrate. 
Actually, the Prophet Sallallahu it is authentic hadith that he sacrificed two castrated sheep. Dhaha bikabshayni amlahayn khasiyayn. But again, about other characteristics. Did you mention anything about the ear? What if the animal does not hear? That's all right. No. That's all right? Isn't that the defect? Yes. No, but it wouldn't make any difference for the meat. So is it the meat that we focus on or um, these categories? These categories. Yeah, yeah. The I think it could be like the most healthiest, you know, sure, all these characteristics affect the, the, the body of the animal. Uh, not the crossed eye? No. So the blind also should not affect the meat then? Right, you can't, but you can't sacrifice the crossed eye. You can't sacrifice the blind. Exactly. Okay, so anything that is greater you cannot sacrifice? Yes. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the limping, right? What about the animal with three legs, not four legs? No? no? That's yeah. obviously limping. <laughs> obviously, you know, Okay, what about the animal without one ear? So scholars here differed. Are these only listed so you could make analogy on things that are greater like blindness? <coughs> or they are specific. What about the things that are equal? And what about the things that are less? Now some scholars like Zahirites, only those four. Anything else is not included. The majority of scholars said that these things and what is greater. But they differed on what is equal to these things. That's where we have the difference. As I said, like you have an ear that half of it is cut. <coughs> you sacrifice the sheep without horn. Can you sacrifice it or not? There are differences amongst the scholars. Some of them say it is based on the meat. It doesn't affect the meat. Some of them say no. It is not only about the meat. This is a sacrifice. You want to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it should be in the best shape. You want to give a gift to someone. You don't choose the worst or the average. You choose the best that you could give as a gift. And this is a sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the issue is about other characteristics. Now, what about the age? What about the age of these animals? Goats? Goats are in the category of the sheep. How old the goat should be? Hmm? What is the minimum? The goat. Six months. Your evidence? Mufti Hashim? Babur says one year, see? Yeah, one year. Same for the uh, One year. They disagree with you. The same is for the The sheep. Same as the goat. Six months? <laughs> or one year or what? Hmm? If you check the age by teeth, the teeth are all the teeth okay, then... Okay, but how old it should be? What about the camel? Two years. Two years. The cows? Okay, I leave this for you because this is actually very important to know the ages. For the goat, the minimum is one year. The sheep, it is permissible, six months. 
The minimum is six months. There is difference of opinions among scholars, but these are the opinions. Now, how do you know the age? By the teeth. No. See, those teeth actually what they call the, uh, yeah, these, now the, the age is determined by the teeth. Vampire? That is a two-year-old. Sheep. And after that, actually, the, the teeth become falling. And you don't want to go beyond three years because now the sheep is not really good for eating. You determine the age by the teeth. And actually, sometimes they joke. They tell you, open your, your mouth to see how old you are. They want to tell you that you are like... Uh, so, this is how you determine the age, by looking at the teeth. And inshallah, we will have someone graduated who is specialized in this. He can open and say, this is the, the age of this. They won't let you open easily. Oh yeah, they, they will. No, no, this is this is two years. This is the six months. These teeth will be replaced. They last till the eight eight months. They last till eight months. And then they fall and the original teeth will be replaced. Hmm? All the teeth have to be there, only two parts. Yeah, do we have do we have teeth on the top? Yeah. No. Only for one pair. Oh, the back. And later. Yeah. These are all the bottom. That's bottom. Yeah. Look, that is obvious. Yeah, that's bottom. Okay. Next issue. Number of sacrifice required from those making them. Now, if we say whether it is recommended or it is obligatory, and you wanted to sacrifice a sheep, you're married and you have, mashallah, large family. You have five daughters and three sons. So they are eight. <coughs> And you are nine, and your wife is ten. So you are ten. What should you sacrifice? One. One. One what? Whoever well, is the person responsible for the family, only that person sacrifice. You sacrifice one, uh, two animals. One, one, one sheep or one part or one seventh of a camel or a cow. One seventh of a camel or a cow or one sheep. On behalf of ten family members? No. Yeah, if you're the yes. if you're the one who's the one who's only one who's supporting them, yes. If you're the one who's supporting them, what if your wife is working? Abu Hanifa, that's her it's money. Her family, it's yeah. not it's not for the woman. It's not for the woman to sacrifice? Not obligated. She wanted to sacrifice. Oh, she can do it if she wants. She can do it. But what you are supposed to do, you have a household of ten. You, your wife and eight you members. Are the one sheep, one goat or one, one sheep. Goat. One seventh. Why you say one seventh? One seventh of a cow, one seventh of a cow. Why you say one seventh? Because you can have seven parts. In a cow. Seven parts. What about so? So the sheep is one seventh. The sheep is one. Sheep is one. Isn't it sufficient for seven? So you have three extra that they need the sheep or. No. No. One sheep is sufficient for you and your family. No matter how big is the family? Yeah. If you can afford 
We're not saying whether you can or you cannot. What are you supposed to do? One sheep, one sheep, per, family. One sheep. One sheep per family. You have your parents, your mother-in-law. It's different. It's a different for mother-in-law. Okay. What about the camels? Seven families. Seven, seven families. Up to seven families can share. Uh, up to seven families. There are seven shares of a camel. You can buy up to six families. So we have seven families, and each family, mashallah, we have ten members. So this is sufficient for seventy people. Inshallah. Cows. Same thing. According to Imam Malik, rahimahullah, sheep is sufficient for one family. Camel is sufficient for one family. Cow is sufficient for one family. Again. Why is that? According to him, they are equal in virtue. But according to the majority, just exactly as what Mateen said, <coughs> one sheep is sufficient for family, regardless of the number of the family member. And seven families can share in one camel or one cow up to seven families. Next we have another issue. But let me double check if that is what comes next or it is in the other Yeah, that will be later. Okay, we'll leave it then. Open the book, page 521, please. Page 521, issue 3. This is about the ages. This is very important. Because not many people know the ages. This issue is about the identification of the ages stipulated for the sacrificial animals. They agreed, they agreed that the jadha, jadha. Jadha, six month old, is not sufficient. Uh, and it is the Thani. Thani, one year old, and whatever is older is. Uh, uh, it is permitted. This is for what? They agreed that the jada or jada six months old is not sufficient in what? Goat. Goat. Okay. And this is because of the tradition of the Prophet of the Prophet وسلم, from Abu Burda. Abu Burda bin Niyar radiallahu an. When he ordered him to make the sac the sacrifice again, saying, "A jada is valid in your case, but for no one other than you." They disagreed about the jada. In sheep. In sheep. What about the jaza, jaza in sheep? Does it have the same ruling or it is different? Let's see. The majority of the jurors approved of this, but a, but a group of jurors inst insisted that a sheep has to be the thaniya, one-year-old. 
The, so the majority say it is what? Again, six months is permissible. The reason for disagreement arises from the conflict between the general with the specific impl implication. The specific meaning is found in the tradition of Jabir who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said, do not slaughter anything less than a musinna or a uh, full grown animal unless that is th difficult for you in which case you may slaughter a jadah from sheep. It is recorded by Muslim. The general meaning is in the tradition of Abu Burda Ibn Niyar regarding the saying of the Prophet ﷺ, the jadah is not valid for anyone after you. Okay, so when he said it is not valid for anyone after you, it is, is it about every jadah or only it was about the goat? So that's the thing. Those who preferred this general implication over the specific sa said that it is not permitted. And this is the opinion of Abu Muhammad ibn Hazm on, on this issue. For he claimed that Abu Zubair uh, commits tadlis using subtle means of, of cheating in the narrations of tradition. You know what tadlis means. And a tradition narrated by a mudallis using the term an on the authority of rather okay than that's that's a long discussion now you notice maybe the age of the camel or the cow is not mentioned here but you need to know it so let me know if you will find the answer tomorrow if not then i will i will give you the answer find out the minimum age that is required for the cow and the camel and you need to tell me tomorrow inshallah if you could not then I will tell you. Any questions? Okay, we'll stop here inshallah.